Good day, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this introduction to Folio Special Interest Groups. My name is Paul Moeller, and I am the team lead for Metadata Operations, Digital Asset Management, and Discovery Services at the University of Colorado Boulder Libraries and the host for today's event. This session is part of a series of onboarding videos for community members. You'll find links to other videos in this series in the description of this video on YouTube or see the member onboarding button on the Folio Project homepage at www.folio.org. Peter Murray, the open source community advocate at Index Data will be our speaker today. Take it away, Peter. Thanks for the introduction, Paul. Uh, good day and welcome to the Folio community. The Folio project has a long history of including librarians and library staff in the development of apps on the Folio platform. The primary way we've achieved this is through special interest groups or SIGs. Librarians and library staff join with product owners and user experience designers in the SIGs to brainstorm effective workflows, draft user stories, sketch out user interface designs, and propose refinements to apps as they're developed. There are generally four types of members in a special interest group. Most SIG members are subject matter experts with a deep knowledge of the SIG's functional area. Most often, we, we often abbreviate subject matter experts as SMEs or SMEs. SMEs are librarians or other professional staff and often are people that supervise a department or have a long history of working in a functional area. SMEs self-declare themselves as SIG members. There's no registration or approval process to joining a Folio SIG. One or two SIG members volunteer to be SIG conveners. Uh, the SIG convener coordinates meeting times, prepares an agenda, and facilitates meetings. SIG conveners also have an ear open for areas of coordination with other SIGs and brings those ideas to the SIG membership. Conveners are invited to attend the Folio Product Council meeting to report on SIG activities and to learn the plans of other special interest groups. SMEs and conveners almost always have just a part-time role uh, in the Folio project, just a few hours a week. The other participants, the product owners and the user experience designers tend to be more full-time or, or at least half-time on the Folio project. As a bridge between the SMEs and the software developers, the product owners translate the user stories and the prototype sketches into actionable work for the developers. The user experience or UX designers work with the SMEs to create sketches and prototypes for how apps will function. I'll cover both of these areas in a moment. Subject matter experts are a key part of the Folio community. Since a significant amount of the Folio functionality is being written for them and their colleagues, the experience SMEs bring to the SIGs is crucial for creating apps that maximize functionality and ensure smooth workflows. SMEs are expected to offer not only their experience of how their current automation system works, but also to work with other institutions to anticipate new and more efficient workflows. That experience and insight becomes the fuel for user stories and interface sketches. As app development progresses, SMEs review functionality and then refine the user stories and sketches as needed. One of the key ways to define functionality is through user stories. A user story has three parts, a who, a what, and a why. 
most often this takes the form of sentences containing as a, I want to, and so that. From this formulation, the product owner writes scenarios that describe the functionality to the developers. Each scenario also has three prompts, given, when, and then. The scenarios form the basis for determining when the functionality for the user story is complete. Most of the app development in the Folio project uses this user story process or some variation of it. Hopefully this description of the user story process helps demonstrate why SME input is so crucial to the development of Folio apps. One of the SIG activities that the user experience designer or UX designer helps with is the creation of wireframes. These are, are sketches of data layouts and functional links and buttons that help the SMEs envision what the Folio app will do. These sketches are developed before a line of code is written. So the SIGs can have as few constraints as possible on designing the workflow. The UX designers work from a library of user interface components that have been developed since the Folio project started. By using this component library, each Folio app looks and behaves in a predictable way across the platform. The component library also helps developers create software faster by avoiding duplicate user interface development across apps. Early in the Folio project, the UX designers pushed the sketching process further to develop prototypes that SMEs could interact with. There was no database behind these prototypes, but the screens were scripted so that you could click from one function to another to follow the design. Now that Folio app develop is moving at a faster pace, sketches move less often to the prototype level. These sketches though, along with the user stories, form the functional description that the developers use to write code. Whether you are considering joining a Folio SIG or are watching this video because you've recently joined one, here are some things to consider. First, what is your interest in expertise? Folio probably has a SIG that covers that area, and if not, the community has intentionally made the process of forming a SIG as simple and as low of a barrier as we think we can. On the next slide, I'll show you how to find the list of active SIGs in the community. Once you have an idea of an area, look on the wiki for the minutes of past meetings and a link to meeting recordings. That will give you an idea of the topics being decided in the SIG and who is participating in those decisions. The next step is to simply join the next meeting. And if you have any questions, you can contact the SIG convener or any member of the SIG. You may find your interests straddle a number of SIGs and based on our own past experiences, we encourage you to carefully consider the time and energy you can put into the Folio project. We of course love to have you as an active participant, but we also want this to be a meaningful experience and a manageable commitment. The Folio Wiki at wiki.folio.org has a list of active special interest groups. If you scroll down the homepage, you'll see a heading for special interest groups followed, followed by a bulleted list. Each SIG homepage has a similar layout. As you explore the Folio SIGs, you'll likely be looking for the content in the rightmost column. At the top of each SIG homepage is a brief paragraph describing the scope of the SIG. Sometimes this paragraph will link to a page with a more complete charter of the work of the SIG. Below that is a bulleted list of communication channels and other important links. 
These will be mailing lists, uh, shared Google Drive folders, links to meeting recordings, and other tools. Below that is a block that describes when the SIG meets and has a link to more details, uh, the Zoom link, meeting minutes, and so forth. SIGs typically meet once a week for an hour, sometime between 8 a.m. and noon in the Eastern US time zone. Uh, some SIGs meet more often and others meet less often. Meetings take place on Zoom and are recorded for later viewing in case you can't make it. Minutes of SIG meetings are usually posted on the project's wiki and sometimes as a Google Doc. Some SIGs have a channel on the project's Slack team for discussions outside of the meeting time. Each SIG has its own set of norms and expectations, so it's usually a good idea to lurk for a while in a SIG to discover those norms. The last item in this column is the information about the SIG convener or conveners. This, these are, are good people to contact if you have further questions about the scope of a SIG and its processes. So that's the introduction to the Folio Community's special interest groups. I hope this information is useful to you and I look forward to seeing you in the community. Paul? Thank you, Peter, for sharing your expertise with us today. This concludes our introduction to Folio Special Interest Groups. We invite you to view the other videos in the Folio Community Onboarding Series by looking in the description of this video on YouTube or following the Member Onboarding button on the Folio Project homepage at folio.org. We look forward to seeing many of you in the Folio Community. Have a great day.